Hey guys, MCU Collector here with another figure review. Next up is the Hasbro Marvel Legends series, the Marvel Studios, now Marvel Animation X-Men 97, the continuation of the 90s series, the X-Men, the animated series. And here we have the Executioner, a, a character that I'm not familiar with. With I just read a like couple of sentence bio on him. Sounds like it is not a mutant, but a former FBI agent that is not happy with mutants getting away with crimes. So he takes it upon himself to execute them, I guess, or punish them. He's a vigilante against mutants. Um, how they will co incorporate that into the show, we do not know. I don't believe this character was in the original uh, animated series, but in X-Men 97, the continuation, it looks like he will have some kind of role in the show. Not sure how big. I bet you it's only going to be a one-episode appearance, maybe two, uh, but we'll see. Interesting character design, a character we've never gotten in the Marvel Legends line before. I don't know if there was ever any kind of toy or figure of him in the past. I want to say there was not, but I could absolutely be wrong on that, so if you guys know, let me, down, let me know down in the comments below. But here we have the artwork of the Executioner there and we get the artwork of the characters in the x-men 97 there looking at the back of the package we see the whole wave i just reviewed magneto so if you may have already seen that video goblin queen was the first one i got goblin queen from target i got magneto from amazon executioner from amazon i have Jean gray cyclops and nightcrawler on the way from toy snowman i will probably receive those tomorrow along with the logan and wolverine two packs so i'm excited about that uh but this one is cool he's got some accessories in there it's an all new sculpt and everything like that so interesting design Design. Let's get right into it and open this up and take a look at the figure. Okay, so here is the Executioner figure out of the package, and it's an interesting design. It's got some okay articulation. I haven't messed around with it too much. Wanted to show you guys, uh, but he's got a fair amount of accessories and things like that. Um, so it's pretty cool. Uh, I don't know what this on his belt stands for. It says F O H, and I don't recall seeing anything when I had kind of looked up who he is. So I'm not sure what that F-O-H means. If you guys have uh, any ideas, you guys let me know down in the comments below. Keep in mind, I think the obvious fuck out of here one is probably going to flag your comments if that's what you're putting down in there. So maybe think of something fun and creative what it could be wrong answers only type of thing of F-O-H. It's probably something simple. I just haven't you know, looked into it to figure out exactly what it is. But hey, if you guys know, let me know down in the comments below. But we'll look at the figure. He's got a few different accessories. He's got this arm blaster thing right there that reminds me of like a Sentinel. It's kind of got the Sentinel colors on there. It's an interesting little piece. I thought you would swap out the hand or swap out the arm or something to kind of get it in there. No, it just kind of rests in there. It's just completely like hollow in there, as you can see there. Um, you could put your finger on it however you want to do it. Um, it's just got some purple, yellow, and this like indigo, uh, violet purple color i guess that'd be like a burgundy yellow and then it's purple or whatever so that we have there he's got this uh weird looking rifle thing and then he's got these two uh spears so he's got one that has kind of a pointy end to it it's got a little peg so you can actually peg it into the rifle piece there it's just done in this silver plastic and that looks pretty good there then you got this other one that has kind of this flat end there um, you know, he can hold on to it like that, or he can just grip onto it. Again, those kind of both port into the gun, as you can see the peg holes there. And then on the other side, you get that peg there, and then he's got a peg hole on his back so you can actually put his rifle. The rifle is kind of interesting, because I want to talk about... I, I want to talk about it. Out of the package, it came with this little plastic piece to hold it, and then I think it was to protect this piece, you know, as it was in this plastic tray. Um, this plastic piece that it comes with is not part of the weapon from the images and things that I, uh, that I saw. I think it was just merely to protect it, to keep it from warping, which it still kind of got a little bit warped, I think. But I kind of like the way it looks almost. Like if you put it, if you leave it on there and it'll hold, like it almost looks kind of cool if that were, you know, if it belonged on there. But I think it is just packing material. It is a hard plastic piece though, which was interesting that I find interesting, but, and now just, nope, it's gone now, lost it, forget it, never mind, forget it. <laughs> anything I said about, I kind of like the way it looked, but, you know, it's not technically officially part of it, but, you know, here is the, the gun, it's got kind of the bright-ish colors, because it is an animated series based design, so you kind of get this, you know, this light brown color, um, so, again, interesting design, um, and then he'll be able to hold that in his hand, and I will show that later on in the review as I kind of piece it together. But let's go ahead and get in for a closer look at the Executioner. 
Okay, so here's a closer look at the executioner. The FOH actually means Friends of Humanity. That was a kind of that uh, semi-terrorist organization that was really against uh, mutants and things like that. So that's what it is. Friends of Humanity, not uh, the, <laughs> the phrase that I had mentioned before. I wonder if I could get away with it one time in the video. Probably cannot get uh, away with it a second time in the video. Uh, but anyway, here we have it, I, and again, the, I had mentioned the spear. I guess this would be like a Shi'ar, like, power lance uh, type weapons there. Uh, these do uh, port on his back as well, so if you want to, like, hold the weapon and then, like, have the other one in his hand, um, you could just, you know, put, like, plug these into his back and it will fit on there. So you have that option there as well. So looking at the figure, looking at the head, uh, interesting design. Um, interesting the way the head goes. I don't know if you could even pop it off or if you could even like grip it enough. Uh, but you know, it's kind of interesting. I like the design. The silver over the black looks pretty good. There's no ab crunch on this guy, but he's got a ball joint at the waist that that seems to allow for some decent movement of the guy. And we'll take a look at that in the articulation uh, point. But I want to show the design of the figure. He's got some silver in there uh, on his arms. He's got this brown band that does seem to be a separate piece on there. Um, it's got these gauntlet pieces. He is pinless. Got the bright orange there for the straps and the pouches. Um, and then he's got like this long trench coat in there. Kind of hides and covers up some of the design of his legs. Uh, but he's got some armor pieces in there as well. Um, and then I'm not sure what the red sash is for. He's got this silver portion there. Interesting design. I think... Um, it's like Shi'ar armor. I don't know if in the uh, in the animated series or in X Men ninety seven if it's going to be or how it's going to explain. Um, it probably won't even go through any kind of an explanation. But um, interesting design for sure. As you can see, like the outer coat is kind of a dark, dark gray, and then inside he's got a little bit more blacks and things like that. So uh, interesting. So let's go ahead and see the articulation now. Okay, so executioner can't really look up. He can look down a little bit, as you can see there. The head is on a ball joint, so you can get some tilt and side-to-side -side motions. He can look to the sides as well. Um, it is a bit odd. The shoulder you can get to go on st straight out like so. Could you do a full rotation? Yes, you could. But the way the shoulder kind of really comes out from this jacket piece, I don't recommend trying to get it to go over. But just know that you know there it, it, there is a full rotation potentially there uh, you get the upper bicep swivel in there double jointed pinless elbow gives you that much bend there at the left arm uh, wrist swivel and it does have a vertical hinge because it is kind of a trigger finger hand so vertical hinge um, on there and then of course you know to wield the lance and stuff you can actually it's best to have that vertical hinge on there the Right arm, you can get to go straight on out as well. This isn't going to hinder it too much. Same situation. You're not going to really be able to do a full rotation. Upper bicep swivel in there as well. You get that much bend at the double joint elbow. Same uh, wrist swivel and vertical hinge on the right hand as well. So the since there's no ab articulation, no diaphragm cut, um, you get a ball joint at the waist. So the waist, you can get him to tilt to his left that much. You can get him to tilt to his right that much, which is uh, not bad. You do get a swivel in there. You get some circular motion. You get him to lean back a little bit there, as you can see. Um, and then coming forward, you get it centered. Uh, you get a little bit going forward. That's more than female figures get. So, hey, not too bad, right? There is a little bit of gap, but the big-ass belt does hide it somewhat, so it shouldn't be too bad. But, like, if you really open it up, you can end up seeing that gap. But I think the belt, again, can hide it uh, fairly well. Legs go out that far apart, but it's going to be hindered because of the jacket port, the long jacket portion. So just a heads up on that. Kicking forward does get limited because of the jacket, but he can't, can't kick forward that much. The leg definitely goes back, but... Jacket gets in the way. Uh, there is an upper thigh cut in there. You get a nice swivel. Uh, double jointed pinless knee, which if you move the jacket around, you can take advantage of that pinless knee. So that much bend there uh, at the knee. There's no calf swivel or boot swivel of any kind. Foot hinges all the way down. You get some hinge up. Ankle pivot is a little bit trickier, but it is there. And you do have peg holes at the bottom of the feet. So... Um, not too shabby of articulation. You know, uh, Hasbro doesn't do ball jointed waists very often. 
Um, and sometimes they haven't been real good. I would say this has been better than most, but it doesn't allow a whole lot of motion forward, but it definitely gives us something at least when, you know, when we don't have the, uh, the ab crunch, you know, that's, you know, definitely better than nothing. So there we go. Okay. So now I'm trying to get the gun in the hand and I, I, I'm, I'm gonna confess, like this looks like weird, right? <laughs> I always get thrown off when it comes to like rifles uh oh i guess that wasn't too bad i just kind of slip it in there and i guess that's how he holds it it doesn't feel real secure but it's in there i guess pretty good um still looks just a little funky to me that that's you know how he holds it but hey uh there it is and eh, i don't really like it let's try the other arm I don't know if the other arm, because it's definitely not as open, so I don't know that he's really going to be able to do it on this hand, but we're going to try it out a little bit. The problem is this thumb and the thumb to come up. Let me see if I if I do something like this. Try, no, that ain't going to work. Could I do it like this? No, nah, that ain't going to work either. Like... No, I don't I don't think it's gonna go in there onto his left hand, but hey, the left hand can absolutely grip the lance pieces. So you can have this, or you could use this one on there. You could do that. Or hey, if you want to do that, you could do that as well. So you get your different options on what you want to do. Yeah, I'm kind of having fun just kind of posing him around a little bit. Not that I'm the greatest at poses. You know, figure photography is not really my thing. Every now and then I get some inspiration that hits me and I'm able to kind of miraculously make something somewhat decent, I would say. Although that's probably a little bit more few and far between. But kind of posing him around it can be a little bit fun. I still think the rifle thing is a little bit weird and kind of how you position it and stuff. And then this is kind of odd that it just rests in there. But hey, it really works. Um, so definitely some kind of fun that can be had with this i am curious to see kind of what role he's really going to play in the show and how that's going to play out i'm excited for it i believe it premieres march 20th if i'm not mistaken on disney plus so just a few weeks away so i'm really excited for it you guys let me know down in the comments below what do you think um, of this figure what do you think of the x-men the animated series um, and x-men 97 are you excited for the show i hope so I am. Now let's go ahead and see Executioner along with his Wave 2 mates, the Goblin Queen and Magneto. Okay, so having Wave 2 all together now, I'm like, oh, sh you know what? Damn, Executioner kind of a little guy. Like, damn. Goblin Queen, I think obviously they made her too tall, right? The heels aren't helping her situation whatsoever. That's kind of the bigger issue with it. But then again, her legs are really long, and I think it may have something to do with the thigh cut stuff and the boot the way it's designed that kind of hinders it a little bit makes it a little difficult but looking at magneto next to the executioner it's like geez right and magneto uses the vulcan body thank you everyone that corrected me on that in the previous video um it is the Vulcan body. So the Vulcan body is a little bit larger than we have been accustomed to. Um, so Executioner next to him is like, ah, Executioner kind of a little guy. Like how intimidating can he really be when he's kind of this itty bitty little guy? Um, so I don't really know because like his head is tiny. Like look at his head. Like that's a mask of some sort, right? But look at Magneto's gigantic dome compared to this. Even Goblin Queens. Like this is just a little guy. So he is disappointing in size. Like I liked him a lot more a couple of seconds ago before I put him next to some figures and was thinking, damn. Uh, 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 I don't know how many people are going to be scared of him. I don't know, but maybe he does some crazy stuff in the show. Maybe he's like a force to be reckoned with. Maybe he just like terrorizes all the mutants and everything. Um, it, I don't know. It's kind of an animated series that's kind of towards geared toward kids, except for the kids that watched the original and are now grown up. So hopefully it's a little bit geared towards us. I don't know, but like seeing him next to, to, to other figures, I, I I am for sure disappointed a little bit. I liked him a lot more. I did. I did. Still fun figure. Still kind of cool. Um, still interesting because again, we don't know how he, how, what role he's going to play in in the in X Men ninety seven. Now in the comics, I don't know how awesome he was. You guys will have to let me know down in the comments below. But when he was compared to other characters, was he kind of like on the smaller side? I don't know. You guys let me know that if you guys know the answer to that. 
All right, so here are all the X-Men 97 figures all put together, all of Wave 1 and the half of Wave 2 that I have so far. So Cyclops, Jean Grey, Nightcrawler are the last ones to add. I'm excited for that Nightcrawler. I am semi-excited for the Cyclops because it doesn't have cell shading like the VH1 version that we got, but I think I hate those head sculpts on that new Cyclops, although we do get an optic blast effect piece, separate head, which is cool. Jean Grey will be all right. The other one's gummy. The other one has a hard time standing. So the new one, also no cell shading on that one. So that's cool. So there are things to look forward to, but you know the Nightcrawler is definitely one that I'm excited for. We got an awesome Nightcrawler already before, but now we get another one that's pinless. I think some of it might be reused. At first, I initially thought it was all new body and everything like that, but torso might be the same. We shall see. But you guys let me know down in the comments below um, how you like these X-Men 97 figures. Are you enjoying them? Have you picked them up? I know a lot of folks really wanted that Magneto. Wolverine is a big hit. Wolverine is a really, really nice figure. The other ones are pretty good. You know, they're nice to pick up if you had missed out on some of the other ones before. If you want to upgrade some of the ones that we got or whatever the case maybe they're all pretty good so you guys let me know all your thoughts down in the comments below but more specifically i want to know what you think of the executioner cool figure fun figure but but undersized just a little bit like if he had a little bit more height to him then okay it's just unbelievable when you got big ass domes big ass heads like these with the executioner who's got a little little tiny head so let me know your thoughts down in the comments below if you guys like this video please do me a favor hit that thumbs up button subscribe if you haven't already done so hit that join button to become a channel member be a part of the mcu collective if you're interested in helping support the channel i greatly appreciate it and as always thank you all for watching